Sketch a graph of the function f of x equals one plus three sine of pi divided by two times the quantity x minus one. Let's begin by determining the values of a, b, d, and c, which will indicate the transformation of the given function. Notice a, the coefficient of sine is three, and the amplitude is equal to the absolute value of a. The absolute value of three is three. And because a is positive, we do not have a reflection across the midline. Let's indicate no reflection. When a is negative, we do have a reflection across the midline. Notice b is equal to pi over two. The period is equal to two pi divided by b, and therefore the period is two pi divided by pi over two. Let's go ahead and simplify this. This is equivalent to two pi over one times the reciprocal of pi over two, which is two over pi. Simplifying before multiplying, there's one pi and pi here and here. Two times two is four. The period is four radians. Notice d is equal to positive one. To determine the value of d, we must have subtraction here. If we have addition, d is negative. In this case, though, d is positive one. Because d is positive one, the phase shift is right one. The phase shift can also be called the horizontal shift. And then finally, c, the constant term, is positive one. Because c is positive one, we have a vertical shift of up one. Because we have a vertical shift of up one, the midline is no longer the x-axis or y equals zero, it is y equals one. And now to graph the given function, let's first sketch the midline of y equals one, which is here. Because the amplitude is positive three and the midline is y equals one, the maximum function value is one plus three or four, which is here. And the minimum function value is one minus three, which is negative two, which is here. We normally graph the basic sine function starting at the origin, but because we have a phase shift of right one unit, we will graph the given function starting at x equals one, which is here. Because the period is four and one plus four is five, we will graph one period of the given function from x equals one to x equals five, which is here. When graphing the basic sine function, we divide the period into four equal subintervals. And then when a is positive, and follow the pattern of midline, maximum, midline, minimum, and midline. Remember when a is negative, we have a reflection across the midline, and the pattern would be midline, minimum, midline, maximum, midline. But in our case, a is positive, and therefore we will follow this pattern. So for the next step, Let's divide the period from x equals one to x equals five into four equal subintervals. And now let's find the five key points over the interval from x equals one to x equals five. So we start at the midline at x equals one, which is here. At x equals two, we're at the maximum function value of four. At x equals three, we're back down to the midline. At x equals four, we're at the minimum function value. At x equals five, we're back to the midline. So here is the graph of the given function over the interval from x equals one to x equals five. And now from here, we simply follow the same pattern to complete the graph over the entire interval. Moving to the right, at x equals six, we'd be at a maximum function value of four, and then back to the midline, and then down to the minimum. So the left of x equals one, at x equals zero, we'd be down at a minimum, then midline, then maximum, then midline, minimum, and back to the midline. And now I can make an accurate graph of the given function. On the right, the graph looks like this. And graph it to the left, it looks like this. To graph this using the graphing tools, because we have a sine function, I would click on this graphing tool here. Once we click on this, we simply click on a point on the midline and a maximum or a minimum. So for example, if we clicked on this point here and then this point, we would have an accurate graph over the entire interval. I hope you found this helpful.